in today's show. We're looking ahead to Saturday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Bit of news before we... Get into talking about streaming for Saturday. Steph Curry, as expected, his regular season is over. Hopefully, he is back for the playoffs. Just a quick note, Gordon Haywood, absolutely out of nowhere, is going to be returning for Saturday's games. I'm going to expect, after missing like two months, that he's going to be on a pretty limited minutes load, but he's obviously a pretty decent player. It's going to hurt your Kelly Oubre's and PJ Washington's. Um, mate, well, Ubre was not rosterable anyway, but PJ was. I'd still probably hold him for the Saturday. Um, I would probably add Haywood, but I wouldn't. No, yeah, I would, just because it's so low volume on the day. Um, but don't expect massive things first up. The other thing to be aware of is the games start ridiculously early tomorrow. Like, they are crazy, crazy early. I'm just looking at the times. I'm trying to convert them in my head. But there's like a game that starts, according to this, at 2.30 a.m. my time. Like, why is it so early? What's that, like half past 12, 12.30 in the afternoon? The Hornets and the Sixers? Yeah, just be aware. There's some very early games, uh, very early games on, on Saturday. Let's talk streaming, though. Warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo Points Leagues. Who are we looking at streaming in? I think Alex Crusoe is still an option. I know it hasn't been great for him this week. But I do think that he is still a, an option um, to use if there are other guys, you know, if there's no one else there. But probably probably the best one at this point is the old big fella, Obert Toppin. I don't want to hear any more about Obi-Wan. Julius Randle is out. Of course, that means that Toppin's going to start. And old mate Tibbs is probably going to play in 40 minutes. So he is probably your number one stream right across any format. I don't know if this means that Randall's going to miss more time. Probably does. They're officially eliminated from the playoffs now. But Obert is someone that you can take a look at, um, again, in most formats. With Randall gone, there's going to be no one to take um, contested two-point spinning uh, mid-range jumpers. So Emmanuel quickly will get a few more shots. They still probably won't push him to 35 minutes, which, again, is coaching malpractice. Shout out to Coach Comover. But quickly is a great option here with that extra usage going his way. In Atlanta, DeAndre Hunter and Kevin Herter, uh, Herter in particular, is on a real hot streak at the moment, putting up really strong numbers. Johnny Collins remains out. Trey Young is likely to play so that you don't get that gigantic usage boost there, but uh, those two guys have value. It is the start of a back-to-back for the Warriors. I expect Porter, Thompson, Iguodala to all play, even Draymond on Saturday, and probably sit on Sunday. That would be absolutely best for us from a fantasy perspective because on Sunday, we're going to have other players to replace them. Porter's an interesting stream. Gallinari... Really limited minutes last time for Atlanta. I think, surely, if you've got the choice between Luau Cabro and Gallinari, um, now that he's not injured, you can push Gallinari to more minutes. But what do I know, Nate McMillan? I'm not coaching a conference finals team into the 10th seed. Mason Plumley, Yeah, probably loses a smidge of value with Haywood back just because it pushes Washington away from the four a little bit more to more at the five. But he's still going to have stream value. The C part of Moses Brown... Uh, in Cleveland, I expect another start for him with Evan Mobley out. And then Kevon Looney. Yeah, that is that is bottom of the barrel-ish type stuff for 12-team leagues. But he's still probably going to get a decent enough role and enough to be useful for us. The ESPN points leagues, we're looking at Alec Burks, who still is somehow available in over 70% of leagues. Alec Berg. You got Caruso, you got Kevin Herter. Kevin Love is available in 70% of leagues. It's been rough this week, the five-game week. And that's, again, I will always state this to you, that when you sit there jerking off over five-game playoff schedule weeks, that it just never works out that way. Like, very rarely does it get you. Like, the Garland stuff's been good. There's still no guarantee he plays all five games. Mobley's hurt. Allen's not playing. 
Love's been shit. Levert's been shit. Um, Stevens has been bad. Markinen's been poor. Like, has it actually worked out for any of these blokes? I don't think so. Um, but people overvalue that stuff a lot, I think. Anyway, Love, good option for Saturday. Obi Toppin, yes. Emmanuel Quickly, yes. Otto Porter, DeAndre Hunter, Gallinari, and Plumley, All blokes that we just spoke about on the Yahoo Points League side of things. And they're all going to have a similar sort of value over there on the old ESPN. Guys, betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the late, latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championships. That this week, Jesus. Odds, podcast reviews for all different leagues this season. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. So we're going to have a look at what is going on game-wise in the NBA today. Let's say the Nuggets are three-point favorites over the Wolves. That's interesting. Minnesota struggled. Last three games have been 20-point margins. One win, two losses. Denver's been pretty strong. Yeah, I guess three points make sense. I think the Nuggets can cover that. The other wild one today is the Blazers' 15-point underdogs against the Spurs. And I know they're trying to lose. The Spurs aren't great, but that is a big, big margin. I don't even know which side I would take there. But Nuggets minus three, I reckon. I bet online, we can check that out over there. So head to that website, betonline.net, or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action. Bet online is where the game starts. Let's go to category leagues. Points category. Who are we streaming? Uh, Obert Toppin. Like he's probably your number one guy there. Gallinari has upside, but is risky given what happened last game. The Winter Soldier, Max Struess, is listed as questionable. I don't normally put questionable guys on these lists, um, but I am going to put Struess here just for this. Now, consider he would be an option across the board. He would be an option in you know, threes category as well. He's been starting and playing 30 minutes over Dunk Robinson. Um, I am, yeah, just, but note that he is questionable. More points, Otto Porter, Duncan Robinson, whose value probably increases if Struess is out. Goran Dragic is a points option. Kobe White. Yeah, look, he's not great. He's not reliable, but maybe 15 points. Maybe 15 points, best case, probably. Then we go to Goran Dragic, Lamar Stevens, George Niang, and Isaac Okoro. That's real rough. Like, those blokes might score six points each. Like, that is, that is how hard it is to get him any sort of influence in the points category. For your threes... Dunk Robinson's right up there. That's all he's good for. We know that. He might have six points, but they're both from three. Niang, Gallinari, Patrick Mills, who's playing 17 minutes a night and doing nothing in that time. So I just cut the broadcast for a gigantic sneeze. Yeah, Patty Mills not doing a huge amount. So um, he's worth... Look, occasionally, I think there's going to be a pop-off. It's been three months of nothing, but it is risky. Uh, Kobe White and Danny Green. Look, that's really all they do. Obi Toppin, just through volume. He'll probably play 40 minutes and might get 15 shots. Otto Porter, Goran Dragic, and another risky one, the Discman, Sidi Asman. Chetty was out of the rotation, came back, played 27 minutes last game, scored really well. I don't trust the role or the scoring or the efficiency at all. But when we're you know, fighting desperately to try and find somebody who's going to contribute, maybe he is that guy for us. Rebounds. Number one guy there has got to be the C part of Moses Brown. Him and Obi Toppin, probably they're going to be the best two options to help you in that category. Looney can help. Also, I don't know why I haven't done this all season, but it's back. The Undertaker, Dwayne Denman. Yep, he has taken over. This has been under the radar, but Markeith, Mor yeah, Markeith Morris and Victor Oladipo, just out of the rotation now in Miami. They played them. They said, all right, we'll give it a try. And they just quietly went, no, 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 no. This is no good. See you later. And they're out. No fuss, no big, big noise, but they're gone. They're not in the rotation. Otto Porter had so many double-digit rebound games. Jericho Sims, Simsy as your backup center in New York. Gallinari, Kongwu, Nikki Claxton getting the backup minutes in Brooklyn. And Tristan Thompson doing nothing in Chicago. For assists, it's wasteland, man. Dragic, Ayo Desunmu, and then, ooh, yeah. Come on, Looney might get three. Iguodala might have three, but you're really relying upon Andre Iguodala. Jesus. Dillon Wright's one to watch, especially if Trey is out. He's a great stream. Kobe White can have the random five or six assist game. Isaac Okoro has shown a little bit of improvement in his passing and his assist generation this year. Uh, Gallinari, Otto Porter, Obi Top, and they're probably just going to get some assists just through being out on the court, but it's not much. There's no real great assist option out there outside of probably Dragic and Dasunmu. And even then, they're very, very far from reliable. 
Steals. I like some of these guys here. Gaz Payton, the doctor, really good steals guy. D-line right, excellent steals guy with huge upside if Trey does sit, which doesn't look likely. Pat Williams started last game in the second half, played big minutes, played at center. Will they play him 30 minutes again? Sure, looks that way. He, that's a two-steal upside player. Otto Porter, Isaac Okoro, good steals players. Actual flock. Maybe Williams got three upside uh, steal, three steal upside. These guys, I think Porter and Okoro got like four steal upside. Gets a little bit rougher after that. Goran Dragic, not the greatest steals guy, but one to watch is maybe Juice McBride uh, for the Knicks. Especially with, well, with Grimes out, especially if they do decide to sit a couple of other players. Juice can come, so Deuce can come in and um, yeah, nab a few for sure. PJ Tucker, Lamar Stevens, and then Obert Toppin. Another option for the steals category. Guys, Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Who wants to get ripped? Like, I know you all do. It's some of you guys over in the States. It's coming up anyway. And you want to make sure that you are not taking in unnecessary calories, but you're getting all that protein you need after your hard gym sessions of throwing around steel and pumping iron and all that bullshit stuff. So why don't you head to Built Bar? Because you don't want to buy another protein bar. They taste like garbage. And when you feel like a snack, you don't want to grab a candy bar because it's too full of fat, sugar, and carbs and calories. Built Bar splits the middle. Great taste, high protein, low carbs, low calorie. And their puffs, oh my God. Protein infused marshmallow goodness. I know there's a churro flavor. I don't have that one. But I do have the lemon dip cheesecake and it tastes bloody great. So head to built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 and you'll save 15% off your order of delicious Built Bars. Built Bar is built different. Let's stream in some blocks. Obvious ones here. Moses Brown, the most obvious block streamer you can find. He hasn't been blocking many shots, but he's still a great one here. Okongwu, Nikki Claxton, Jericho Sims, The Undertaker, Dwayne Dedman. Some very interesting... Some of those are backups. Okongwu, Claxton, Sims. Deadman, all of them apart from Brown are. But two blocks in 17 minutes is not crazy for those guys. Then you go to blokes like uh, Obi Toppin, Patrick Williams, Taj Gibson, who may or may not, not even play. Um, maybe they play him a little bit with Randall out, just as an, uh, maybe at the four, like Thibodeau's crazy. Like, so maybe. Danny Green is a wing guard, uh, shot blocker. And come on, Looney, who should play 22, 24 minutes, I would guess. To influence the field goal percentage category, Claxton, Okongwu, Gaz Payton, Moses Brown. That's 70% for Moses, probably. Deadman, Sims, Looney, Thompson, Desunmu, and Stevens. So when you're looking for like a, the weird combination of maybe field goals and assists, Payton and Desunmu, there's not many of those guys around. And that is, someone asked me the other day, I went, shit, there's not that many options around for that. But there are a couple of guys who are options, Desunmu and Gaz Payton, who can help you with both assists and with field goal percentage. Free throw percentage. Gallinari, Lou Williams, Kobe White, DeLon Wright, Duncan Robinson, Shake Milton, George Niang, Javante Green, and Isaiah Thomas, if he stays in the rotation, which he might not with Gordon Haywood back. They did sort of reduce him last game and gave more minutes to Kelly uh, Oubre. We'll see what they do, but just watch to see whether he plays or not. There is a risk involved in that. I'm not going to talk Saturday, Sunday back-to-backs because... There's 12 games on a Sunday, so if you add someone for the Saturday-Sunday back-to-back, the fact that they're sitting on the wave wide, they're just going to sit on your bench on Sunday. So I, I don't really think that it's worth focusing on that. It's worth focusing on what you actually need for Saturday rather than prioritizing an ad for a worse player who you don't even use on Sunday. But what I will do before we head out of here is just give a quick update on injuries for um, Saturday's games. As I said, Gordon Haywood likely to return. It is a back-to-back for the Sixers, so there's a chance that Harden and Embiid, and Embiid rest in one of these two games. Watch that. Mobley's out, Allen's out, Randall's out, Rose is out, Noel is out. Benny Simmons is out, of course. Johnny Collins is out. Seth Curry and Bruce Brown are both questionable. Watch that one. If they're out, then maybe it's Kessler Edwards' time. Um, Trey Young, probable. Caleb Martin, Max Struess, and Gabe Vincent all questionable. If they all miss, then Duncan Robinson and maybe actually Victor Oladipo has to step back up because they're three wing players who are you know, potentially having a role. Uh, Hassan Whiteside questionable for the Jazz. And of course, Steph is out for the Golden State Warriors. And guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you're here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.